Now what in the world do these things have to do with street food in India? Let's find out. Getting sick while traveling is one of the absolute worst things that can happen to you. With such limited time to travel and explore the world, we have to make sure our bodies are <coughs> as healthy as possible in order to make the most out of our experience. So how can we do this when we're always in a new place? Welcome to Luke Salwia, the place to learn how to live and travel better. In this video, I'll explain how I've stayed healthy while traveling around the world with just using food choices. I've traveled a good portion of the world, including many undeveloped and developing countries like India, Cambodia, and Cuba, and managed to stay quite healthy while doing so, even while eating the local street food. I read a lot about traveling to India before I went there, and I broke all of the rules without getting sick. I had raw vegetables, raw fruits, dairy, meat, and of course, the incredible street foods. Now, how in the world is this possible? According to the National Institute of Health, the body has around 30 trillion human cells and about 38 trillion bacteria. There are more bacteria than cells in your body, so it's super important that you keep them happy. Every time you move to a new place and eat new foods, new strains of bacteria can overwhelm your immune system because your body has never faced these different types of bacteria before. To explain how to deal with these new types of bacteria, I want to first explain some important things about your digestive system. The first thing I want to talk about is probiotics. Probiotics are foods that have living microorganisms that aid the current bacteria that help keep your body functioning normally. Again, you have around 38 trillion bacteria in your body and most of them are good for you and help you digest. It is critical to keep these little guys happy and healthy. Some examples of food with probiotics in them are Greek yogurt, kombucha, kimchi, kefir, natto, sauerkraut, and airan. Each of these foods has different probiotics in it, so a good mix of these types of food can make sure you have the healthiest gut you can have. Also a little side note, a lot of modern diets around the world, especially in the US and Canada, lack a good source of probiotics. Try to include these in your diet at home to keep you healthy and happy there too. The next important thing is prebiotics, with an E. Prebiotics are plant-based, high-fiber foods that act as food for the bacteria in us. Some examples of these foods are almonds, bananas, whole grains, flax seeds, and cabbage. We can't digest them on our own, so they're only for the microorganisms inside of us. These foods are eaten by probiotics and other bacteria and are turned into our last important item, postbiotics. Postbiotics are the waste products of the probiotics eating the prebiotics, and they're actually really good for us. We eat foods to feed bacteria that make compounds for us to digest. Without going in too deep to the biology, the postbiotics offer good boosts for our immune system and digestive system. So what does this all mean for traveling? When we travel to a new place, our body comes into contact with several new strains of bacteria, many of which our body has never seen before. Especially if you're going to be in a new place for a while, it's best to introduce new strains of good local bacteria into your body before opening the floodgates to having new foods. As soon as I get to a new country, I find foods with a good combination of probiotics and prebiotics to help prepare my gut for me to eat any of the street foods that I want to later on. So many countries like India are world famous for their local street food and are a must if you want to fully experience a place. So making sure you introduce good local strains of bacteria into your body before you try the street foods is critical. If the new country I'm going to has grocery stores, I'll make sure to purchase Greek yogurt, local in-season fruits and vegetables, and of course make sure to wash them with clean water before you eat them, and a probiotic drink like Yakult, Dan Active, and Activa Probiotic Dailies, depending on what the grocery store offers. I'll stick to these foods for the first two to three days and only eat at the cleanest restaurants and have the least intense dishes while the new bacteria starts to take root in my gut. After the new bacteria has set in and your immune system is super powered with postbiotics, you're ready to explore the world of street food in whichever country you're in. Just make sure that at the beginning, you don't fully open the floodgates and just eat street food. Slowly ease into the transition and give your body time to eat the local foods. Also, some quick tips for street vendors. One, make sure the vendor's cooking area looks clean. If food is left out or trash is all over the place, there's a higher chance you'll get sick from contamination. Two, avoid vendors with lots of flies around. Flies love to jump around between trash, food, and feces, and this is a surefire way to get sick. One fly is okay, but five or more is dangerous. Three, 
Make sure there's a line of locals at the vendor to make sure all the food you're gonna get is freshly cooked. This way you won't be eating any food that's been left out for a while. Four, only eat street vendor food if it's served piping hot, ensuring all harmful bacteria has been killed. Five, double check how clean the cooking oil is by seeing how frequently it's being replaced. If the oil is on the darker side, it's probably been used too many times, so make sure to choose a vendor with light, brighter oil. If any of those quick tips aren't true, err on the side of caution, especially at the beginning, to make sure you don't get sick. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to keep up with future videos.